Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the squeeze theorem or sometimes as it's called the sandwich theorem. So literally called the name of food per se. Okay so what is the squeeze theorem? So I will be referring it to as the squeeze theorem and not the sandwich, or not, and not the sandwich theorem because that's the more common name. Okay so what is the squeeze theorem? Well the squeeze theorem says well, if a limit is between two other limits and both of those limits go to the same value, then the limit that's squeezed in between has to go to the same value. What does that mean? So let's just kind of draw, write this all down a little bit to kind of explain the idea. So suppose I have that f of x is less than or equal to g of x. And let's further suppose I have that, that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is consequently less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Now, by the way, this does not have to be less than or equal to. It could be less than as well. That's totally okay. So let us now, this, suppose this is true. Now, let's suppose that we have the following inequality. So suppose we have f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x. Okay, so let's say, for example, so in other words, suppose that g of x is between f of x and h of x. So now let's take the limit from all of these kind of ends. So in other words, suppose I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x and that is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of say uh, h of x so notice all these limits are going to the same point they're all going to a so if all these three limits go to the same point and this inequality is true now let's furthermore suppose that I have that the limit, so suppose that this limit right there is equal to L, and suppose that this limit right there is also equal to L. The squeeze term simply tells us that the middle limit has to equal L as well. And that should make a lot of sense actually if you think about it. So graphically, it kind of looks like this. Let's, so let's go ahead and draw a plot of the situation. So here's an axis. So here is some greets a different color for this one. So here's the here's h of x right here. Here is g of x, the middle. So I'm gonna use red for this one. So here's g of x, kind of looks like this. And here's f of x, the very bottom. So for this one, I'm gonna use blue. So kind of like this. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna label this really quickly. So that's f. So that's f of x. Uh, let's see this red color there. That's g of x, and this green color right there. That one is equal to h of x. Okay. So suppose all three of these limits are as shown. So these inequalities correspond to this kind of graph right here. Okay. So if that's true, oops, sorry, I, can't, I erased that by accident. So that should make a lot of sense. If this is, if this right there, if that's a, and this corresponding point is equal to l, well, it should make a lot of sense. If this blue graph goes to a, we get l. If this green graph goes to a, we also get l. And because the red graph, so in this case, g of x, because the red graph is squeezed between these functions or is in between or is sandwiched between these two functions, that's also gonna go to L. Then graphically, that should make a lot of sense. So if a function is between two other functions, well, it kind of has to go to the same value. Okay, so that's what the S and that's essentially what the squeeze term says. I'll do a very simple example to just, just to kind of demonstrate the limit. I'll actually do two very simple examples to kind of demonstrate the idea of what a squeeze term is, but I'll do a lot more better examples in the next video, just to kind of give an idea of how useful this limit can be. And we'll do a lot more of this when we get to derivatives. But with that being said, let's go ahead and do a few examples, or a few very simple examples for that matter. 
Okay, so suppose I want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times sine of 1 over x. Now notice we can't just plug in 0 because although this limit is, although this part is fine, we can't just plug in 0 because if we did that, we would get a 0 right there. And of course, 1 over 0 is undefined. Now, you might be tempted to think that we could split this limit using the limit laws. So, for example, we you might be saying that, oh, we can't we just do this? How do we, well, what's, uh, what's stopping us from doing this? Why can't we just split the limit like so? Well, the, the reason we can't just split a limit like that is because we don't know if the individual limits exist. Like this one certainly exists. The limit as x approaches 0 of x squared is, of course, 0. But this one, well, if you plug in 0, it's going to be undefined. So we can't multiply something that's undefined with something that exists. Although you could argue that 0 times undefined is 0, but that's that's nonsense. So that's, that's not the best idea. So we, we're going to use the squeeze term. So we need to find a function that's in between two other functions. That might seem hard at first, but it's actually not that bad if you think about it. So how do we kind of make an inequality out of this? Well, I use I call this method construction. Of course, there's no real name for this. It's just something I personally call. So the way we uh, the way I do this is I think of sine of x. Well, we know for sine of x. Well, here's sine. Uh, we always know that sine is between minus 1 and 1. So this is minus 1, and that's 1. So it's always bounded by those kinds of inequalities. So minus 1 is less than or equal to sine of x, which is less than or equal to 1. Now, changing the x to a 1 over x is not going to affect the range of the function. It's still going to be between minus 1 and 1. It'll look kind of weird, but that's OK. That's not going to affect the range. It'll affect the domain. But the range is unaffected. So if we do that, we get sine of 1 over x, and that's equal, and that's going to be less than 1. So that's not going to change. Now we're going to now you might be asking why why am I doing that? Why can't I just suddenly flip that around like nothing? Well, the reason I use the word uh, method by construction is because I'm going to take my this original inequality. And, uh, and I'm going to try and manipulate it until it looks like this original limit, because ultimately that's kind of what I want. So notice we now have a sine 1 over x, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to try to multiply both sides by x squared. So if I do that, we get minus x squared is less than or equal to x squared sine 1 over x. And that's going to be less than or equal to x squared. Okay, now we can go ahead and take the limit because this is now what we have in the original limit. So now we get the limit as x approaches, well, 0 of minus x squared is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared. Well, this is obviously 0. This one, well, we don't know yet. So that's still going to be x squared sine 1 over x. That's not going to change. This one is obviously 0. So the squeeze term tells us, so we scroll up a little bit, is if this limit is equal to the same thing as this, as this limit, the middle limit has to equal the same thing. So kind of simplifying that, if this limit is equal to 0 and this limit is equal to 0, the middle limit has to equal 0 as well. So this limit right there is equal to 0. So to kind of conclude that, the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x is equal to 0. And that's it. So nothing too crazy there. So you got to be careful. Uh, you can't just plug in 0 for limits like this. You have to use a squeeze term. And you can usually tell to when to use a squeeze term because there's always going to be some sort of sine function or cosine function. Sometimes there can be tans or arctans or inverse trig functions, but that doesn't usually happen very often. Generally, you'll always have a trig function of some sort. But of course, that being said, that's just a universal kind of rule for what to do for a limit. Anyways, let's do another simple example. And I'll do a few more weirder, odd kind of examples in the next video. But let's just do a simple example. Let's just kind of conceptualize this. So this one, we have to limit as x approaches 0 of x times cosine 1 over x to the 5. Okay, 
So once again, we can just plug in zero because although this is zero, we, uh, this will give us undefined. So this is not okay. So once again, uh, we're gonna start with the inequality. Now, once again, the same thing happens. Sine is between one minus one and one. So the same thing kind of happens with cosine. Well, so cosine kind of looks like this. So that's one, and this one is of course minus one. So minus one is between is less than or equal to cosine of x, which is less than or equal to well one. So if I go ahead and flip this x around, well that's going to give us minus one is less than or equal to cosine of one over x is less than or equal to well one. So that's not going to change. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I have this little raised to the power of five. So I'm going to raise both sides to the power of five. So if I do that, I get minus one to the power of five is less than or equal to cosine of one over x to the power of five is less than or equal to one to the power of five. Well, minus one to the power of five is just negative one. So that's not going to change. So this one is cosine one over x and that's equal to one. So that's fine. Okay, so the next thing is, oh, sorry, that should be a to the power of five. Okay, so the next thing I have is, uh, is this x. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by x, we're gonna get minus x is less than or equal to x cosine one over x to the power of five is less than or equal to x. Oh, sorry, that x should be outside. So it should look like that. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches zero from all of these three kind of ends. So the limit as x approaches zero of negative x, less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of x times cosine of one over x to the power of five is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of x and of course, well, that's gonna be zero. We don't know what this limit is, so I'm not gonna write that again. So we'll just copy paste that over really quickly. Uh, and there we go. Oh, the L didn't copy, that's okay. So I'm just gonna get my marker back out. There we go. Okay, and this limit is also equal to zero. Okay, so consequently, as a result, this limit, according to the squeeze term, so this limit right there, is also equal to zero. So as a result, well, we're done. So that's not too bad. Okay, so hopefully this kind of demonstrated how the squeeze term works. It's not too bad. It usually, you use it when you have like a product of limits of some kind, and it involves trig functions because using trigonometric functions, it's very easy to kind of build up an inequality like that. Now, what happens when you don't have that? Well, here's the thing, that doesn't usually happen. If you don't have a trig functions, most, a lot of functions in general aren't necessarily so nice, nicely behaving in terms of periodicity. So as a result, other than trigonometric functions, you don't usually use the squeeze term too much, at least in a standard calculus course. You just you just generally don't do that. So with that, I will do a few odd examples. When I say odd, I mean the kind of weird examples in the next video. Uh, but otherwise, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment. And if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you then.